If you clicked on this video, you probably understand the gist of the show Squid Games. Contestants are forced to compete in a bunch of different games to win a large sum of money. The only problem is that these games are extremely deadly, and most contestants don't make it to the end. Out of all these games though, there's one that caught my eye. The Glass Bridge. Because of the way the game is structured, we can actually predict how many people are expected to survive given a couple initial conditions. If you want, pause the video to see if you can predict how many survivors there should have been in the show. But stay tuned so I can show you the math behind it. As a recap, let's go over the basic ideas of the game. We start with a certain number of contestants that have to make a certain amount of jumps to reach the end. Next, on each jump, there are two glass panels. One will break when weight is put on it, and the other one will stay intact. In other words, the probability of us losing a contestant on each jump is one half. Conversely, this also means we have a one half probability of not losing a contestant on each jump. To summarize this into something we can use mathematically, we can say we have a sequence of random events where we know the outcomes of those events and the probabilities of those outcomes. If you've studied some statistics, you would know this sounds like an expected value problem. There's a problem with this formula though. Can you spot it? That's right, this only accounts for the last jump of the bridge. And that's a problem, because the contestants have to do much more than one jump to get to the end. Luckily, this problem can be solved with something called recursion. I'll save the details for now, but just know recursion's purpose is to help us break a large problem down into a bunch of easier subproblems. Applying this to the game, we can turn the problem of predicting the average survivors for the entire bridge into a series of smaller problems where we predict the outcome of a single jump, then feed it forward as we progress. If we use numbers from the show, we get a bridge with a length of 18 jumps. We can then define the expected survivors after the 18th jump as 1 half times the expected survivors of the 17th jump minus 1 plus 1 half times just the expected survivors of the 17th jump. Similarly, the expected survivors after the 17th jump is this formula where we continue referencing the previous jump. We can then carry this logic throughout the whole bridge until we get to the start. And once we get to the start, we can finally get some concrete numbers. Once again, if we use numbers from the show, the initial contestants become 16, and we get an expected survivor count of 15.5 for the first jump. Then we feed that value forward into the next formula and get the expected survivors of the second jump. To keep things short, I'll calculate the rest of the jump's expected survivors, and we can see that by the end of the 18th jump, seven survivors are left on average. We're not done yet though. Viewers with a keen eye might have noticed a pattern within these expected values. They go down by 0.5 on each jump. There's an intuitive reason for this. Since each jump has a one half chance of losing one survivor, the expected loss per jump is one half times one, which is 0.5. This also means we can create a nice visual for the game that models what would happen with different bridge lengths and starting contestants. Here's a graph that models the average number of survivors for the bridge game. In our case, the x-axis is how many jumps until the end of the bridge, and the y-axis is the number of players left at the end. With one survivor, the graph is virtually flat, but as we increase the starting contestants, it has this effect of sort of lifting the graph up off the x-axis. There's a few cool properties of this graph, so if you want to play around with it, I'll put a link to it in the description. But for now, this has been the math behind Squid Games' Glass Bridge.